The next portion of this lecture deals with effective nuclear charge. So effective nuclear charge is represented as Z subscript effective, and it's equal to Z minus sigma. Z effective is the attraction to the nucleus that's felt by an electron. Remember the nucleus is positive, the electron is negative, so there is an attraction. Z you have already been introduced to. It's the number of protons in the nucleus. Sigma is known as a shielding constant. Inner electrons shield more than outer shell electrons. So Z effective is similar to the atomic number, but adjusted slightly by shielding. I like to think of the attraction the electron feels to the nucleus as a tractor beam drawing in ships to the Death Star. The more protons, the stronger the tractor beam. The ships, which are electrons, are going to get pulled in closer, and the shells, the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, are waves of attack fleets. So here is the Death Star model of effective nuclear charge. I'm sorry to those of you who do not follow Star Wars, though you're all supposed to be majoring in STEM in some way, so you should embrace the whole persona. So what I have here is the Death Star and its green tractor beam, and we're going to start with the first attack wave. Now, the Death Star is concerned that Princess Leia is on one of these ships. So it's not going to try to destroy the ships. It wants to bring them in and do a search. So this would be the 1s attack wave. It starts with one electron. As we add the second electron, the intensity of the tractor beam goes up because now they've got to bring two ships in to search. And these two ships are in the same shell. So they dilute the effect of the tractor beam a little bit. Let's bring in the 2s wave. Once again, the operators of the Death Star are going to say, oh, now I need to turn that tractor beam up because there's another ship out there. So the 2s wave, you notice, is further away than the 1s wave. So this is what I mean by inner shell electrons interfere more than same shell electrons. Certainly for this 2s wave, these first two ships are interfering a bit with the effect of the tractor beam. Let's add another electron so the tractor beam will be stronger. And you notice how for this new ship, the core electrons interfere more with the tractor beam than the ship in the same attack wave. So this is red attack wave, green attack wave. How about blue attack wave. Here we go. So here is a ship in the 2p wave of attacking. So once again the tractor beam has noticeably increased. The electrons in an earlier shell are going to interfere greatly with the effect of the tractor beam on this 2p ship. But of course the 2p wave has six total ships. So these other ships in the same wave will result in the tractor beam being turned up, and they will interfere slightly with one another's tractor beam being in the same shell. Well, what about the gold wave? Here we go. So here is our 3s electron coming in, and you notice that there are many electrons between this electron and the nucleus, such that there is a great amount of shielding. Okay, that was fun, but let's talk about actual atoms, nuclei, and electrons now. Here is the Z effective trend for the outermost electron, which of course we are going to represent with an arrow. Here is hydrogen. It has one proton and one electron. So the effective nuclear charge this electron feels is plus one. Now we move to helium with two protons, and two electrons. You notice how the electrons have been drawn in 
closer to the nucleus by the increased tractor beam. We've now gone from plus one to plus two. So the effective nuclear charge that these electrons feel is not plus two. It is plus 1.7, because as these electrons travel in their wave-like patterns, they occasionally get in front of one another and between that electron and the nucleus. So it's not plus 2, it's plus 1.7. Now we're going to start a new row, which means another attack wave. Now naturally, it's going to be a little bit further apart. So you notice how lithium has plus 3. So it has really started to draw in those 1s electrons. But we're focusing on the outermost electron. So in terms of this 2s electron, it does not feel a charge of plus 3. It feels plus 1.3. Now let's move to beryllium and we're drawing in the orbitals closer to the nucleus, and the outermost electron feels a plus 2. Now the 2s and the 2p orbitals are very close together in energy, so there's not a radically different effect when we move from 2s to 2p. This newest electron in the 2p orbitals does not feel plus 5, it feels plus 2.6. Let's add a few more. Orbitals are being drawn in closer. The next electron for carbon feels plus 3.3. So perhaps you notice as we go across the second period, as the charge increases, the effective nuclear charge that the electron feels is increasing, and the orbitals are drawn down closer to the nucleus. Let's start the third period. Well, look what's happened here. Although the nuclear charge has gone up to plus 11, the outermost electron feels a plus 2.2, and that electron has moved further away from the nucleus. So here are your take-homes. Z effective increases from left to right across a period. Across the first period, it increases. Then across the second period, it increases. And I will show you a slide soon that shows you it increases across the third period. So it's always increasing. The only thing it does is as we start a new row, it drops back a little bit. If we look at the atoms that are in the same group in the periodic table, like hydrogen, lithium, and sodium, notice that Z effective increases down the group. Now the trends I gave you were for the outermost electron. Please notice that the inner electrons feel the tractor beam much more strongly than the outermost electrons. An electron in the 1s of the sodium atom will feel a charge of plus 10.7. Here is a question for you. Which outermost electron experiences the greatest Z effective? And you're given a list of elements. This might possibly be difficult to answer without looking at where the elements are in the periodic table. So I'll let you look, and I'll take a brief check. Here are your elements in the periodic table circled in red. And please remember that Z effective increases as you go across a row. So here is a general diagram for the Z effective trend for the outermost electron. It increases as you go from left to right on the periodic table. It also increases as one goes down on the periodic table, which means it increases diagonally across the periodic table. And as mentioned, here is a chart that shows you Z effective increasing across the second period, and then when we move to the third period, dropping to a lower level and once again increasing. So the smallest Z effective is hydrogen. Your largest Z effective will be your lower rightmost element. 
Please remember that z-effective increases with atomic number with a drop between rows.